Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are San Diego. As certain as the waves wash up along our wonderful shores here in San Diego, as certain as that is the hitting talent of our cleanup hitter, Justin Upton. Upton with a base hit in every game played thus far this year and wants to continue that attack as he brings the 300 average into tonight's game against the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's game two of this three-game home series, the Diamondbacks and the San Diego Padres. And good evening, everyone, with Mark Grant, Dick Enberg. Uh, last night, a disappointing 8-4 loss to Arizona, but a bright spot, Yonder Alonso. He had his first home run. Really squared up a pitch last night. He's hitting 360, and when Yonder Alonso, batting six tonight, can put the ball in play, hopefully the big guys can be on base and set the table for him. Yes, he likes to spray the ball over the field. He is a doubles guy when he is swinging the bat correctly. Right center field, left center field, it doesn't matter. Trying to shorten up his stroke, but look at the on-base percentage, Dick. When you're right around 330, that's pretty average. He's at 448 for the Padre first baseman. Keep swinging that hot bat. More runs tonight, hopefully, resulting in a Padre victory. Well, they talked about the OPS on mm -hmm. the pregame show. His OPS, 968, also outstanding. On the mound, a man who enjoys pitching at Petco, Odrisimur Despagne. If I had any advice for the old right-hander, don't change a thing. He was perfect last time out in those four and two-thirds innings. Only one strikeout, but they put the ball in play. A lot of movement, a lot of late movement. The infielders were busy. He doesn't have to be perfect this time around. Just take him deep into the game. Good quality pitches and hopefully get some support. That goes a record for Despagne, three and one. Well, our focus will be on the cleanup man, Justin Upton. What is his hitting philosophy? Well, Chris Bud will have that answer when we return.
Welcome back to San Diego Game 2 between the Padres and the Diamondbacks. So, Drew Samar Despagne on the mound for the injured Ian Kennedy tonight. And Justin Upton has hit safely in every game so far this season, right now batting 300. He shared with us his philosophy of hitting and how he's able to slow the game down. Slowing the game down to me is not getting outside of yourself. You know, it's, it's easy when, when the game's on the line and that adrenaline fills you up to to try to get big at the plate or try to try to go for the homer when in actuality you only need the base hit. You, you almost have to to stay with. My key is to stay within myself. You know, I, I know that if I catch a ball, it's gonna you know it, it could be a home run, but I can also hit a line drive to right field and, and win the ball game. So Upton and the rest of his teammates will try and provide some run support for Despagne today. And be careful, he's a guy that likes to change things up on you. Perhaps he can follow up his near-perfect performance from last Thursday. We got first pitch coming up on Buck Sports San Diego. Had the win last night. The Diamondbacks now have won five of the last six games here at Petco against the Padres. They're four and three on the new season. The Padres' record now at a level four and four. As Odrisimer Despagne, the 28 year old Cuban, takes the mound. And let's take a look at the Arizona Diamondbacks starting lineup tonight. The new skipper of the D backs, Chip Hale, has them lined up this way. J. Pollock. Then Chris Owens moves from shortstop to second base. Paul Goldschmidt, their star first baseman. David Peralta cleanup. Mark Trumbo, a couple of big hits last night. Jake Lamb, the third baseman. Tuffy Gosawish behind the plate. Nick Ahmed, outstanding shortstop defensively, will hit eighth. And Jeremy Hellickson, former Tampa Bay right hander, on the mound. And the scouting report for right hander Odris Despagne. He didn't have much time to think about his last outing. Maybe that's a good thing. He was perfect for four two thirds. He's deceptive. He mixes it up. Arm angles, velocity, different types of pitches. And once again, did I say he was perfect last time out? Absolutely 14 times perfect. Just another day at the park, out there on the hill, having some fun. San Diego County Ford dealers present the Padres defense tonight. Upton Myers and Kemp left to right in the outfield. Middlebrooks and Alonzo at the corners of the infield with Amarista and Salarte, the double play combo. 
And Derek Norris behind the plate for Despagne. Set to go. And another beautiful San Diego night. There is the first year manager Hale, 50 years of age, former University of Arizona star. A.J. Pollock leads it off the center fielder, and we are underway. First pitch strike from Despagne. Well, Hale has done the Padres seemingly a favor even before the first pitch. He does not have Ender Enciarte in the starting lineup. Enciarte just wearing out the Padres last night. Two doubles and a triple. One and one and hitting 393 Enciarte, the sixth best average in the National League. Not that Pollock isn't an outstanding hitter as well, but Enciarte is really off yeah. to a blazing start. That's a strike. And right out of the shoot, Dick changes that arm angle on that two seam fastball. Ender Inciarte there on the left. He, since uh, last year in August, the last 23 games, hitting 381. Yeah, Bob Brenly, the color analyst for the Arizona Diamondbacks TV, came over and said that the computer got Inciarte. Because, <laughs> again, there's BB. Because in Ciarte versus Despani is like two for 12. Really not good numbers, so he's getting the night off. Wide, three and two. With Owings and then Goldschmidt to follow here in the first inning. Owings starting last night at shortstop. Moves over to second. Tonight. Middle game of this three game series. Tomorrow night it'll be Brandon Morrow for the Padres, Chase Anderson for the D backs, and then on the road, flying out Thursday for a three game series in Chicago, then four in Colorado. What Audrey Samir Despagne does quite well is he stays over the rubber and really doesn't rush towards home plate. It's kind of deceptive too because he keeps that front side closed and see the ball it, it's behind his head and then all of a sudden it comes out at you very very quickly that could be a deception part of his delivery as well. Then you got to deal with the arm angle and the movement of the ball. Well, Pollock, he started at Notre Dame in his collegiate years earns a leadoff walk to start the first inning. And that brings up Owings. He's uh, had trouble getting out of the gate this year two hits in 19 trips. One of those hits last night in, in that four run second inning knocked in a run. Good hit run type guy here. Chopped by the mound. Middle Brooks has to hurry, can't make the play. Ace making waste. He probably would have been able to throw him out. Tough play. We'll see how they score. It's ruled an error, and that's been an unfortunate pattern for the Padres of late. And uh, that was a very revealing statistic. Uh, Mike Pomerantz in Padres Live, the pregame show. Eight games, four of the games, no errors. The Padres are 4 0. The other four games, errors, 0 and 4. That extra out will jump up and knock you on your seat. Goldschmidt. Hitting 333. No surprise there. One of the best. A couple of home runs and seven runs batted in. And an opportunity early tonight, and he hits it high to right field. Kemp giving ground. Tagging is Pollock. He'll advance to third with one out. Arizona with runners at the corners. Well, we know that Paul Goldschmidt can use the whole field. That's what makes him such a good hitter. Hits for power, hits for average. Can double you to death. And let's see here. He gets his hands through. He tries to hit the inside part of that baseball. And just gets down towards label just a little bit. Couldn't really get the fat part of the bat on that one pitch here. Kind of leaked in on him a little bit for the fly ball to right. Well, we've seen him through the recent years hit a lot of home runs to right field. David Peralta at 250 this season. He's hit safely. 
10 out of the last 11 games against the Padres. Takes inside. And he's 4 and 8 facing Despagne. Goldschmidt has flied out for the first out. That's a line drive double play. Alonzo picks it off the dirt. Peralta hit it hard. Alonzo well stationed. And a first baseman unassisted double play to end the first inning. Presents Padres Baseball brought to you by Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Stars Kevin James in theaters April 17. By Petco, what we feed them matters. And by Kaiser Permanente. Drive. Padres come up in the bottom of the first inning. Here's Buddy Black's lineup brought to you by Toyota. Will Myers, then Jan Salarte, Kemp and Upton, Norris hits fifth, Alonzo sixth, then Middlebrooks in the seventh slot, Alexi Amarista before Despagne. Will Myers leads the team in runs scored here early with a half dozen. Had a couple of hits last night, an infield hit, and a ringing double to right center. Jeremy Hellickson. 28 years of age. Des Moines, Iowa. 6'1, 190 pounds. Comes over from Tampa Bay. Had uh, only 13 starts last year, injury problems, and was 1 and 5. That's misleading, mind you. Drive to right center field. That's it way out there, and it is off the base of the wall. Myers cruises into second with a double. That's almost a copy of the double he struck last night in the seventh inning. Let me tell you something, Friar Faithful. This kid, Will Myers, is some kind of strong. Because when you look at this swing, it's a four seam fastball. He just that is a smooth as silk swing. And he just throws the head of that baseball bat and just rifles it off the right center field wall. Man, that was that was a pretty swing. And a great result. So the Padres with a chance to strike it early. Here's Solarte. 368 average. Chops that one off by the mound. It's going to be a tough play now, and they can't make it. Myers will hold a third. The ball kept running, and pitcher Hellickson was in the chase trying to get to it, trying to get there, and it just had enough. Momentum on it that it rolled uh, by him. Look at this chase. And, uh, what are you going to do? You know what? Helixson's got to commit more on that, I think, Dick. He kind of held up a little bit before he got to that baseball. Watch him. Off the bat, he's going, going, going. He kind of pulls up right there. He's looking at the second baseman. What you have to do on that one, they go over to spring training as a pitcher. 
you bust your tail to get to that ball. If you can get it, fine. If you don't, you, you just get to the bag. The infielder said pick up the slack. But it's a real dilemma because the first baseman Goldschmidt, he, he was trying to decide, do I go for it? No, he goes to the bag. The second baseman is much too deep to make a play. And Solarte is the beneficiary of an infield hit. First and third, no one out for San Diego. And here's Matt Kemp. Outside ball one. 90 on the fastball. Yeah, Hellickson's not going to really light up the radar gun. He's going to be about 91, 92 on that fastball. Got a little tail to it for that four seamer that Myers rifled off the wall. Change ups a lot, curveball. He likes to nibble. He will nibble on the corners. Ooh, almost hit 10, 2 and 0. Jeremy Hellickson, fastball curve change, allows a lot of base runners. That means he's working in the stretch quite a bit. <laughs> and look at this. Bottom of the first already two base runners. And he can give up the long ball. He almost did just that to Will Myers. In a word, Hellickson, you could use slow in a couple of different ways. That's a strike two and one. He throws more changeups than any pitcher in baseball. 30% last year of his pitches were changeups. And they time pitchers between deliveries and next to David Price he's the slowest in delivering the next pitch perfect of, uh, anyone in the National League over 26 seconds timed last year. Two and two there's a two seam fastball that runs in on the right handed hitter hasn't thrown Kemp a strike yet. So David Price taking 26.6 seconds then Hellickson and then Jorge De La Rosa. Camp waiting for something in the strike zone. Up the middle. That's a nice play by the shortstop Ahmed to get the force and scoring on the play is Will Myers. One nothing Padres as Kemp knocks in his sixth run of the season. Got just enough of that breaky ball. To put it in play, get on the board. Who says you have to hit the sweet spot? Trades places with Solarte. So the Padres pick up added speed with Kemp over there and not Solarte. And Justin Upton, the batter. Inside ball one. Upton hitting safely in all eight games of this season. He was the very first player selected by the Arizona Diamondbacks 10 years ago out of Chesapeake, Virginia. And since being traded away, he's hit 348 against Arizona. Myers telling uh, Dave Roberts just how you do it. You just hit that ball right there, yeah. right center field. So didn't you see it last night? I told you. I love that deep in conversation, especially who doesn't love Dave, Dave Roberts. He talks to pitchers, he talks to position players, he'll talk to catchers, he'll talk to the popcorn vendors. He'll even talk to announcers. Yes, he will. He's the nicest man in baseball. Right down the middle at 91. Two balls and a strike to Upton. Derek Norris on deck. Ellickson, if you go back just a few years, four years ago, the American League Rookie of the Year. Two and two. Change up. That's the pitch that yep. he goes to more than uh, anyone in the league. That off speed change. Stays on top of it. It's got that four seam grip. Very tough for a hitter to pick up. Just a little bit behind it. Good arm speed right there by Hellickson. And he'll throw it back to back. Yes, he will. Full count. Another change. Try to make a fish on that one. So as a rookie, he won 13 games, 13 and 10 with an ERA of 295 to earn the American League honors. Outdistancing uh, his teammate now. 
Mark Trumbo finished second that year with the Angels. See if Kemp is going and a little visit over there by Hellickson just in case. Camp long look across at Glenn Hoffman, his series of signs. Camp goes and it's fouled away. Padres at this stage early in the year of the Second best hitting team in the National League. What a turnaround that is from a season ago when they were dead last all year long when it came to hitting the baseball. They start tonight with a 278 average. Colorado's way ahead of everyone else, as per usual. 317 team hitting so far for the Rockies. Inside, ball four. That pushes Kemp to second, still one out, and brings up Derek Norris. As we check the Diamondbacks defense brought to you by Renovation Realty. In the outfield, Peralta on left, Pollock in center, Trumbo in right. Lamb, the third baseman, Ahmed, the heralded defensive shortstop, makes a start tonight. Owings moves to second, Goldschmidt at first, goes to Wish behind the plate for Hellickson. That's a pretty darn good defense there, starting at center field with A.J. Pollock. He can go get him and then up the middle, Ahmed. Owings. Good combo there. Derek Norris. Ball one. Here you're talking about Norris and how he, he he plays dirty, and I say that in a very positive way. Wants to get that uniform dirty. A lot of grit. Mm -hmm. A lot of tough character. And it reminded me there's a catcher back in the 60s, uh, Clint Courtney. They call him old scrap iron. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of scrap iron in this young guy. Sure. He takes pride in his hustle and hard work ethic. Two on, one on, and a run home. There's the change up for a strike. He'll throw it righty on righty. Hellickson will, of course, on lefties get that dip down and away. Looks like he's got pretty good control of it because he threw a great one to Upton right on the corner, and then he made one fish for it. Down in the dirt. That one was a good pitch. Hey, Joaquin Benoit is changeup heavy. That's his secondary pitch, right? right. Fastball changeup, just like Hellickson. Out in front. Is again the changeup. Padres will get a chance to go to school on that off-speed pitch and uh, try to figure it out. Tony Larusa, now head of baseball operations, Hall of Famer. Tremendous career as a manager, and that's Dave Stewart, uh, the new general manager, familiar name, was part of the Padre organization a few years, and a player, a coach, an agent, front office. Great story about Stewart. He was a tough guy on the hill. Slice fouled on the right field line. The, Do the Dodgers. Uh, when Stewart came up, I don't think he came up as a pitcher. He was a position player. They made him a pitcher, and he told a story uh, this winter. I was privileged to be at a conference in Las Vegas, and he told the story of going out and pitching against that great Dodger lineup just as a raw, raw rookie. And he said, to say I was wild would be an understatement. And uh, and so he said he. Dave Lopes comes up and uh, Tommy Lasorda is over entertaining the press, not paying attention. And I throw a cut and then I hit Lopes. And then after Lopes, Reggie Smith steps in and the sort of still talk. I hit, I hit Reggie Smith and then Ron Say and I hit him too. And then Steve Garvey and I hit him. And finally, Lasorda yells, Who's there? Who's that double agent on the mound? Get that double agent. He's trying to kill my lineup. And he said, <laughs> Stewart said, I walked off and I thought here it is that my career is over and uh, and Lopes said hey you don't walk off the mound with your head down keep Great it up nice. kid. Great. And later he said I was in the bungalows there packing up my bags I didn't know how far they were going to send me away. Lasorda wanted to get me out of there in a hurry. 
And uh, Reggie Smith and uh, Lopes came over to him as he was leaving saying, hey, you're going to be back. Oh, and he came back all right, didn't he? He did. Won uh, 20 games, four straight years for the Oakland A's. Nice story, huh? That's great what story. Team chemistry is all about. Yep. The veteran guys taking care of the young guys. Yeah. You can see some talent just kind of patting you on the backside, say it's hey, it's going to be okay because they see something in you. A ball, two strikes. A run home to a board for Derek Norris. Uh, you look for the change, you get the 91 mile an hour fastball, and that's the whole story tonight in facing this right hander. Camp at second with the RBI ground out, up to it first, and Alexson misses again. So yeah. Struggling with his control here in the first inning. Yonder Alonso would be next. Boy, when they say he likes to nibble, they weren't kidding. Fox Tracks has got him all over the place. So there's all of those pitches, six, only one down the heart of the plate. Just got a piece of that. Another changeup. They're throwing it 3 2. How about that, folks? He's throwing a 3 2 changeup with runners on first and second and one out. That's confidence in a pitch. But with you, only one out, uh, that pitch count 23 yeah. already in the first inning. 95% I mean, of the pitchers out there, they're going to try to locate a fastball. Occasionally they'll try to, you know, throw the shorter breaking ball to try to have the hitter fish for it. Field into the corner. That's a fair ball to the wall. Kemp scores. Upton running all the way, and he will be held at third base as the relay comes in. A ringing double. Derek Norris and the Padres have a two nothing lead. Kemp comes around to score second and third with one out. So a double by Myers. Infield hit Salarte. A walk and now a double off the bat of Norris. Well, oh, Derek did a nice job of driving with those legs, and this pitch right here, it's a four-seamer. It's got a little tail action to it right down the heart of the plate. Stays on it nicely. Stayed back on it nicely. And Derek, a.k.a. the wall, hits one to the wall. Stop sign for Upton. The Padres got something going here with one out. Now a 2 nothing lead. Norris with his fourth run batted in. And that brings up Yonder Alonso with two, two men in scoring position. Last night it was the D-backs running up a four-run second inning. Uh, Padres have a chance to do the same tonight here in the first. Here's Alonso last night with his first home run stroke of the season. 417 feet into the sand pile. But as Yonder would tell you himself, that's not his game. His game is doubles. Hitting the ball to right center, left center. Sharp single would play rather nicely here. We got the shift on of that Diamondback infield. Short stop on that, almost behind second base. On ball to the first baseman Goldsmith thought about coming to the plate. Hit. Has scored and now Upton slides in with the third run of the inning. And Goldsmith early in the game not taking a chance on throwing him out at the plate. Gets the sure out at first base. Credit Alonso with an RBI. And Upton, you know, looking at the infield, remember the shift was on? Well, Goldsmith playing way back. Owings playing way back. So on contact. He is off and running. Watch Upton. Swing, contact, got to go. He doesn't break stride. It would have had to take a perfect throw right there. So reading the defense when you're on third base and one out. Will Middlebrooks takes a fastball inside. Norris winds up at third. Two outs. Misses 2 and 0. 
prior to tonight. First eight games of the season, the Padres scored four runs in the first inning, a total of four. Pick up three tonight. And that would make it the uh, most productive inning of the nine, a total of seven. <laughs> Will Myers is just a social butterfly, isn't he? <laughs> he just. <laughs> he's talking to Dave Roberts. He's talking to Yonder Alonso. He wants to get some camera time. He's a smart guy. He knows who's driving in the run, so he double himself, scored a run. What a good kid he is. And he is young. He's yeah. 24. And a young Colt. Swing and a miss, and that'll do it for the Padres in the first inning. But on a couple of doubles, a walk, and an infield hit, the Padres roll a three in the biggest blow of the inning. A line shot double into the right field corner off the bat of Derek Morris. On to the second inning at Petco. The Padres jump in front early, 3 0. San Diego, top of the second. The Padres lead it 3 0. Odrisa Mardespagne getting the start today because Ian Kennedy is on the 15 day disabled lift with a left hamstring strain. Buddy Black saying today he hopes that Kennedy will be able to throw a bullpen tomorrow. He'll throw two of them and then we'll need a rehab game in the minors because he only got a few innings his last start. And then before that, his last start in spring training was that Mexico City exhibition game. And he only threw about three innings there. So he'll need one more game to build up that endurance guys all right thanks Chris uh, for that report that means if he uh, gets through the uh, the rehab session he'd be eligible uh, to rejoin the team on April 25th meanwhile Despagne takes his spot in the rotation Mark Trumbo and the count goes two strikes on the outfielder and on April 25th the Padres will be hosting the Dodgers in the middle game of a three game weekend series here at Petco. Ground ball, Alonzo well off the bag, able to get back ahead of Trumbo for the out. Time now to check the keys to the game brought to you by your Honda dealers of San Diego County. Mark? Well, because of last night's game, don't give away any outs at this level, you know, at any level. You can't give away extra outs. You got 27 of them trying to get them all. Uh, about 28, 29, and 30, and keep the table setters off the bases. Talking Pollock, Owings, and you get to Goldsmith, Peralta, the guys who's got some oomph in their back. Keep Enciarte off the on the bench and off the bases. 
And right out of the get-go, Dick, I was like a, 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 an F because the first two guys got on base and they had an error, but they didn't score. That's right. It's not how you start. It's how you finish, right? That's right. This is a, a nine-inning marathon, not a one-inning sprint. Jake Lamb, 6 4 15 looks out at the 400 mark. Finds that one fair ball into the left field corner. Dug out by Upton and Lamb, a one out double. Screaming that shot into the left field area. This good looking young hitter had a couple of hits last night, including a double the other way. Out of the right field corner. So knowing what the Spagne throws, as we take a look out of the hand, looks like a two seamer that's up. You try to pull that ball, you're not going to get good results. Lamb does a nice job. Top palm down, and then the roll, slicing that ball down the left field line nicely, staying inside that ball. Brings up the catcher, Tuffy Gosowicz. Five for 23, a 217 start. Gosa wish uh, a call from the uh, commissioner's office. High fly ball right field. Giving ground is Kemp. He's got a beat on it and makes the catch going away. Tagging and advancing is Lamb as the throw comes in. That ball carried well off the bat of Gosevich. Apparently, uh, he was not uh, getting into the batter's box quickly enough at the start of an inning. As you look at the, the fly to the ball, intercepted by the glove of Kemp. Lamb to third. And his argument was if you're a catcher and you got to put all that equipment on, you're a little bit late uh, going in and out of the uh, game. That was his appeal. We're still working that out, but the umpires are verbally reminding hitters they got to keep that foot in the batter's box. Nice stop by Norris. That could have cost the Padres a run. Nick Ahmed just three hits in his first 17 at bats. Back to the mound and this saves a run as he leaps up and spears it. Well hit. Nothing for the D backs in the second. Uh, the community spotlight and it's brought to you by Mission Federal Credit Union earlier today Mission Fed donated three thousand dollars 
to the Center for Community Solutions and also provided tickets for tonight's game to representatives from the Center for Community Solutions. Mission Fed proudly donates around $1.5 million a year to local charities. And we congratulate them on their charitable hearts. Bottom of the second, 3 nothing Padres, Amarista, Despagne, and the leadoff man Myers against Helixson. Through 30 pitches in that first inning. Now he's talking to the manager, Will Myers. Having a good night at the ball yard, Will <laughs> Myers. Where would you rather be? Double the thrills of that sweet sound when you yeah. make great contact. Oh. Sound of a well delivered catch smacking into that leather. You know, I guarantee you that swing that Will took his first at bat that ball, he didn't even feel it off the barrel of the bat. But, you know, it's, I don't know what it's like when you hit a golf ball solidly. Yeah, but it's the same. Yeah. Hit, I don't know, I've never felt that. But I'm sure it's a pretty good feeling. Well, you ought to try clubs the next yeah. time you play. But that was a beautiful swing. Chases strike three. He got Middlebrooks, Helixson to end the first inning, and Amarista punches out on a ball in the dirt. 12 to 6 curveball, good rotation, tight spin. And like his changeup, it looks like Helixson knows how to spot the off speed pitch as well. And that's very key for any pitcher. What's the over under on when Despagne gets his first major league hit? Whew. He's 0 for 26. And takes a strike. You know, I got to call him as I see him, and I—I uh, I think it's going to be a while. <laughs> hey, I'm rooting for the guy. Oh, we all are. Do you think he'll get a hit this year? Let's put it that. He's going to hit a double right here. Watch. Whoa! That's a wicked ground ball that got almost past first base coach Valentine. Tell you what, that bat speed is like a pearl through prel. <laughs> Remember that commercial? They used to drop the pearl in the pearl shampoo. It was so slow. Took about an hour and a half to get to the bottom. Look at that bat speed. Strike three. So three strikeouts in a row for Jeremy Hellickson. And top of the order, Will Myers. He got that three run first inning kicked off with that long double to right center field off the base of I the think, wall. I think Andrew Cash just spit the seeds looking at that swing from Audrey Samir Despagne. <laughs> Oh, believe me, they, you'll hear it, guys. You will hear it. You'll hear it in the dugout, in the clubhouse. Tyson Ross. Somebody came up with a major league quip there. That's the pitching fraternity. They they root hard for themselves to be the best hitting pitcher, and they can have fun with somebody that logically, with that swing, uh, it, it may be a, a career before he gets a base hit. James Shields wiping away a tear, uh, breaking down laughing. See, that's one of those cases where, like, kangaroo court, somebody will bring up the case of, against Odrisa Smith Despagne saying, hey, you know what? With that swing, you're embarrassing the ball club. We've seen better swings on a playground. <laughs> Two strikes on Myers. in that changeup. Yeah, and especially with the way Myers hit that ball last time up, Dick, right center field fastball, I guarantee you that Hellickson is going to try to pull the string against Will. A pitch away from striking out the side. Hellickson. Inside. Two and two. Right, Mark Grant. He doesn't throw many balls in the strike zone at all. Look at that. Not one in this uh, 2 2 count. Sharply hit. Lamb able to cradle it and make the throw across for the out. A 1 2 3 inning. And Hellickson able to strike out. Odrisamer. Despagne. <laughs>
Plays with a three nothing lead against Arizona. Time now for the T-Mobile game changer. And our T-Mobile game changer involves a with perfect defense and without. No errors, four nothing Padres. At least one unearned error, 0 and 4. A telling statistic. They did commit an error in the first inning tonight. Let's hope that uh, trend will be broken. Hellickson, only seven at bats in his career, one for seven. That went deep into the lower tier. Well, he's a pretty darn good athlete. Anytime you win rookie of the year, you win a gold glove. You know that you can swing the bat. Only a 143, but still. He looks like a hitter in the box. Yeah. Swing and a miss. And Espanye has his first strikeout. Tonight's game, fans, is presented in HD by Sony 4K. I hope you're enjoying the sights and sounds of beautiful pictures. Like Logino. All in the shots. Our camera crew. Spot on. Beautiful scene. HD. AJ Pollock, the leadoff man, walked the first time. There's the off speed pitch, 77. But when he throws that almost an EFIS pitch, the slow curve, then those will be timed out in the uh, 60 mile an hour range. Not a bad pitch. Huh? Nice One frame job by Derek Norris. He tried to you know, stick it right there in the outside corner. One ball and two strikes. Went after the high limb, a 91 mile an hour fastball. A lot of pitchers will have a Speed differential between fastball change up, you know, what, 10 miles an hour? Would that be the accurate? I mean, enough that it uh, fools the hitter, but not dramatically different. Then there'll be others with a big range. High bouncer over the mound, Amarista throws out Pollock, two away. And here's the example of those that really have a wide variance in speeds, including Despagne. Yeah, when you can throw like 95 and above, and then you have that breaking ball, that curveball that there is in the low 60s or even the high 50s, you know, it's really tough, I would think, as a hitter to stay back, especially you've got movement as well on the curveball. Pretty much curveballs or changeups. I would say pretty much curveballs. But the Spani, 95 on the heater and 62 on the off speed. That's a 33 mile an hour differential. And then you have to deal with arm angles and stuff like that. That's tough to square up. And you start thinking, well, maybe you'll throw that slow spinner this time, and the 90 mile an hour fastball seems like 110. Owings safe on an error the first time. He just disrupts the timing of the hitter so well. And let's face it, everybody's going to have a bad outing once in a while. You just don't have it, or the hitters are on your stuff. That's exactly what he's doing. Back and forth, up and down, in and out. Congratulations to that happy fan. She has a baseball souvenir. Breaking ball fooled Owings. One and two. And then the different arm angles. You know, every hitter, they like the idea of that pitch coming at the same angle every time, because right. that's where they're looking, trying to pick it up out of the pitcher's hand. Jammed in. One and two. Did you change your arm angle? You know, that? Dick, I, I did later in my career. I wanted to get a little funky because I lost the fastball and I created movement with the two seamer, the slider, the, the sidearm curveball. Not a lot is Audrey Smear, but once in a while to give the mm -hmm. hitters a different look. Absolutely. Swing and a miss. He chased. Second strikeout. Despagne, he retires the side in order in the third.
You and Matt have a little bit of fun with Will now and again, and, and I would imagine that's got to help build that whole confidence and chemistry. Yeah, uh, Will's, Will's a little interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> interesting. I use the word interesting, but man, like like you said, he, he's got, he's a young, you know, you know, free personality. Sometimes we got to rein that in. <laughs> well, you'll get more of that uh, very interesting, charming interview with Mike Pomerantz on SD Live tonight. As we go to the bottom of the third, Salarte Kemp and Upton scheduled. The guests will be Will Myers and Justin Upton. We're dressed up for the show uh, in our studio. <laughs> one on one time with the Fox Sports San Diego crew. SD Live is back. It's right after Padres Live tonight. The game, then Padres Live with Mike Pomerantz and Mark Sweeney. And then stay tuned for SD Live. Of course, Mike Pomerantz does such a great job on SD Live. Oh, he's amazing. How about Will Myers going with the Jim Courier look? <laughs> Looks like he just got off the uh, the tennis courts. Salarte, an infield hit the first time. Two and one the count on him. He's hitting almost 500 left handed so far this year. He's seven for 15. Choking up on that bat, bat control. He's got a nice compact swing yeah. and he has a good idea of the strike zone. I don't see him swinging and missing very often. And in the hole, Kemp on deck. And ball four, a leadoff walk. And that'll bring Kemp to the plate. Kemp in the first inning, ground ball fielder's choice to drive in a run, his sixth of the season. Let's see if that leadoff walk can. Uh, Turn into another good inning for the Padres. Second from Hellickson. Let's see if he starts him off with something soft here. Got confidence in that changeup. He gives him the fastball at 90. He has the second best April batting average in his career in the majors. Miguel Cabrera is the only man who's hit hotter in the first month than Matt Kemp and 319 average. One and one. We're going to peek into Tuffy and see what he puts down here with the one one count. Change up. Fastball away. Fastball in. He got it in there and he got it down. Yeah. Huh? And a two saber. The backs elect not to use the dramatic shift on Kemp in this at bat. Second baseman Owings is swung over near second, but uh, not that. Full shift of three men on one side. Curveball. See if he bounces it here. Good layoff right there, Matt Kemp. Upton on deck. He walked the first time and scored a run. Fastball in. And it is in. Well, he's consistently 89 90. We've seen maybe 91 from Hellickson. Salardi at first, not a fast runner, so it's not likely they'll send him three and two. Shook off the changeup and went to the fastball away. Base hit to left field. 
Tony Gwynn be smiling. That's the old 5.5 hole base hit. And the Padres have the first two men on here in the third. Well, the second time around, the Mad Kemp, you know, he has thrown some change ups, but he's going straight fastballs. So, what does that tell you? He's trying to locate to get Matt Kemp to try to beat that ball, the grounder. There's a curveball there just for looks. Backs him off with the two seamer. And once again, right down the middle. Dick, you made the point earlier with the Fox tracks. Not a lot of pitches from Helixson down the middle. That's a mistake right there that Matt Kemp capitalized on. Pitch number six is right down the dish. So first and second, no one on for Justin Upton. Padres with a three-nothing advantage here in the third, and looking to add on. High fly ball down the right field side. That's going to become a souvenir. Gosh, he is so quick to the ball. Just enough to. It's a uh, little talked about, but. It really is significant. The Padres at Petco, hidden in all the statistics, they have the best home record since last year's All Star break in the major leagues 27 and 10 at Petco. And to add to that, and this is back to the preaching of manager Bud Black win series, win series. Well, since the All Star break, 11 series played at Petco. Padres have won 10 of them. Have lost none and split one. So they have to come from behind in this series to keep that going after losing last night. The goal would be to win tonight, tomorrow night, leave on the road trip with a winning record. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. Back to the third with Solarte at second, Kemp at first, and the count of ball in the strike to Upton. Took a pretty good pitch, just a little low, says Bill Miller. Boy, Helixson will just rock the hitters to sleep, won't he? Very deliberate. Two balls, two strikes. Well placed fastball. <laughs> what? A couple minutes ago, he's talking to Corey Spangenberg. You can see Corey's left the picture. Now, let's see who's my next victim. Oh, Clay, Clint Barmus, want to talk? <laughs> Did you the one about the baseball outfielder and the farmer's daughter? Oh, strike three right. call. That's At the knees. The delay call from Miller. But down goes Upton, the fourth strikeout for Hellickson. Slow walk back to the dugout for the Padre cleanup hitter. Four seamer. Pretty good pitch. Yeah, too close to take. And pitch number five, the Fox tracks by Honda. Uh, but that baseball touching that line there. And once again, that strike zone. Moves accordingly to the strike zone of the hitter when he is in the box. If you're the man on the mound, that's what you're trying to do. Yep. Hit that low strike. Norris doubled into the left field corner, drove in a run in the first inning. And that ball deep at third, the long throw across, and just in time. Norris again showing that he can run very well as a catcher, almost legged it out. That ball right at the bag, and Lamb needed all of his arm to throw him out. Very close. Runners move to second and third. You know, I knew this was going to be close, but I didn't think it was going to be this close. Lamb backs up that little bit. Uh, Might have got him. Slow it down here, and well, bang, bang. Isn't that it, though? Could have been called safe. So two away. Solarte to third, Kemp to second. Yonder Alonso grounded into a RBI out in the first inning. Chance to pick up two more runs. Ball one. 
Alonzo hit it sharply, but right to Goldsmith at first base. And on the play, Justin Upton scored from third. Good layoff. Will Middlebrooks is on deck. First base open, 2 and 0. Oh. And they're going to walk in. Kellickson figuring they'll have a better chance righty against righty with Middlebrooks coming up, and he struck out the Padre third baseman the first time. The base is loaded now as Alonso joins Solarte and Kemp. 63 pitches, third inning. Those which probably going over what Hellickson wants to throw the first couple pitches. Runners and scorpions, just don't be surprised if Hellickson starts off with the changeup or the curveball. Yeah, pretty good location of the fastball, though. Strike one, changeup. Randall Delgado, right hander, begins throwing in the Arizona bullpen. Padre over every pillow. Chance to break it open here in the third. Three nothing. With the home side. High ball to right. Playable. Trumbo there. And the Padres will leave three in the third. On to the fourth. Three nothing. San Diego. Brought to you by Ram Trucks with Odris Samir Despagne on the mound. We talked about it quite a bit from the left. How about the low three-quarter arm angle? And what's the pitch? It's the old curveball down and away. Now it's the same delivery, but up on top just a little bit more. And with that dippy do, it almost looks like a changeup. And then on the right side, low, low three-quarters. And what pitch is this? As a hitter, you're all but guessing up there. You don't know what is going to come your way because he'll throw anything, anytime, any arm angle. That's the OD we know and love. It's very interesting and really good insight into his various stuff as Paul Goldschmidt, the first baseman, leads off the fourth inning. He flied to right the first time. That slow curveball of Despagne, and he hasn't really pulled the string on the 63, 64 mile an hour curve. It breaks seven inches horizontally. Just think about that. Put your hands apart, you know, at half, a little more than a half a ruler. Seven inches side to side. 
and 11 inches vertically, almost a full foot. So the hitter is going to judge the, the movement, both at the ball, in this case, Goldschmidt moving away from him as well as dropping down at his feet. And our colleague Mark Sweeney, he wanted to get a good look at Despagne in action, so he left the dugout area and he has got a Prime seat tonight behind home plate. Yeah, guys, this is outstanding. What a bird's eye view behind. And you can see Despagne with so many different arm angles. And this is the view if you're close to the to the action to see everything, see the movement, see the speed of the pitch. It's amazing to be back here. And really, it almost feels like you're in the batter's box. You can call balls and strikes back there, can't no, you? No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> two and two to Goldschmidt. This is the angle that Mark Sweeney is watching as the slider is outside. And you know, if you ever get a chance to sit that closely to a big league ball game, you know, we get so desensitized sitting away, and the game looks slow. But when you're down there close, that fastball gets up on mm -hmm. you. The ball off the bat, it's it's kind of scary. The one hoppers of the infield. I'll tell you what, it gets up on them quickly. Whole, totally different game from down there. Well, it's true of all sports. You get yep. closer to the action, it sanitizes it. Uh, when you're up here, I mean, it's just it, it's just like watching a dream. Same with basketball. You're down on the floor, and those guys, the power and the speed of those athletes, or boxing, those punches really do hurt. Fly ball right shallow. Out goes second baseman Solarte calling and makes the play. Dangerous Goldschmidt is out, leading off the fourth. That brings up David Peralta. Well, on the left, pretty much a uh, high three quarter arm angle. And then on the right, he's dropping down just a little bit. Mark Sweeney, that's your view there, Haas. Yeah, it's an outstanding view. You can see the arm angles definitely is deception from the hitter's perspective. Very difficult to pick up, and you're almost in a guessing game mode from in the hitter's box. Oh, that one getting. Peralta. Hit by a pitch. And he'll take first base. One out in the fourth. Squaring the butt and took it right inside the knee. Ooh, that's a tender area. Someone might yell out from the dugout, hey, you're hitting cleanup. What are you up there bunning for? So one out hit batsman brings up Mark Trumbo, power hitting outfielder. So as you can relive your baseball playing life as you sit back there, Mark Sweeney, what caused you more trouble? A pitcher with all the different angles or the one with the exaggerated Variance in speed. You know, Dick, it's so interesting because uh, velocity, and I've always said this, doesn't necessarily put fear into a lot of hitters. They like the velocity because that's usually the straight pitch. It's always the movement and it's the different arm angles and also deception. If a guy is hiding a baseball and he has velocity with that, it is very hard to pick up that release point. It almost seems like it just comes out of his hands and it's a lot faster. So that's when velocity kicks into it. But if you have velocity and a guy doesn't hide the pitch, it tends to be a lot easier. And you know, with all the other pitches, we take a look at that off-speed pitch there. That was a curveball at 77. Despite has hit 95 tonight on the fastball. Now, when you mix that into the equation with the different arm angles and the change-ups and the curveballs, good luck in locating the 95. Good luck squaring that up. Crumbo grounded out to first. His initial at bat. Off the head of the bat foul, one and two. You know, guys, we're seeing tonight, and it's the disparity of Andrew Kashner and then Adrisi Merdespagne, two totally different pitchers. One's a power pitcher and Kashner, and then you have Despagne, the different arm angles we've talked about, but you're seeing a lot of the approach for the Diamondbacks taking early in the count, trying to see the pitches, trying to get that timing back, because it has to be a huge adjustment from last night to today. 
The infield set for a possible double play, and that pitch high at 92. Trumbo injured last year, played only half the season, still clubbed 14 home runs. Hit 95 in the preceding three years with the Angels, so he's in constant danger to go deep. Outside, nice backhand by Norris. Mark Sweeney, I have this question for you. You were talking about velocity pitchers. Who was the one guy that really humped it up there, but you really felt comfortable and had good success against? You know, it was actually Kyle Farnsworth. You remember him? Yes. He was upwards to you know 100 miles an hour, yes. and you could see his arm. And when I talk about hiding the baseball, if the body is away from the arm and you saw that release point all the way through, it typically that speed didn't really worry him, didn't worry you too much. But there's also guys that you see better and that ball drilled to left center field that's up the alley all the way to the wall Myers trying to play it in and here comes the runner around third Peralta and he will score it's a three to one game on a double by Mark Trumbo. So the hit batsman becomes the first Diamondback run tonight. How'd that sound from your vantage point, Mark? Yeah, it has a loud sound, and when you hit it off the barrel, you can hear it. it. Does it still amaze you, Mark Sweeney, that when you sit right behind home plate, I mean, you played 14, 15 years in the big leagues, that guys have the hand eye coordination to turn that around? I've always marveled at that, Mark, too, and, and it, I think it has a lot to do with training your eyes, training your vision, and why they have such a long spring training to get their vision. Corrected and also get that timing aspect involved. Jake Lamb, the left handed hitting third baseman, he doubled into the left field corner his first time up. Going to give you a, a look from behind real time. Look at what, what is it like three tenths of a second you have to decide on a pitch thrown? It, I mean, it's it's like a blink of an eye. If you count thousand one, it's ta. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Two and zero oh now to Lamb, trying to pick up Trumbo. That's a three-one score now in the fourth. As the Diamondbacks are on the board. Well, with the runner on second base, a series of signs and a lot of shaking off. With Derek Norris. Oh, the inside move. So the two hits off the Spagne, both doubles tonight. Lamb a double the first time. And now the RBI double by Trumbo. And the count goes three and up. This finally thought he had a strike there. On deck, Tuffy Gosen. Wish. Oh, they green light him. Salarte with a backhand throws and gets him. Salarte saves a run and able to get Lamb swinging 3 0. Good play. This ball is smoked. Short grass and it stays down at Salarte firing a strike. Trumbo moves to third, but two outs now is that's a big defensive play by Jan Salarte. So tough it goes to wish. Fly deep to right field. Sent Kemp almost to the barrier and right to collect his high drive. Trying to pick up Trumbo. Popped up. Norris flips the mask. Back to the screen, and the inning is over. 
Thanks to Jan Salarte. Oh, yeah. Mark was ready to field that, huh? Salarte, it stays at 3 to 1. San Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Saquon Casino. Real friendly, real close. And by Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box and try out Jack's blazing chicken sandwich. And welcome back to beautiful Petco Park on this Tuesday evening. Arizona and San Diego in the middle game of their three game series. Eight four. Diamondbacks last night the Padres with a three to one lead tonight as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Alexi Amarista then Despagne and Myers to hit. For the Padres. Don't wander away Despagne is on deck. Push foul. Alexi in the last four games. Four for nine. Funny, maybe he's going to hit left handed this time. <laughs> one and one. Manager Chip Hale had the right hander Delgado loosening in the bullpen for Arizona the last inning, but Alexson getting off the hook with the bases loaded on the fly out by Middlebrooks. This one sails toward the line in left field. A long run for Peralta and the shortstop Ahmed and the trio of Diamondbacks could not get to it. Just out of reach. That's a lot of hustle right there on part of those three Diamondbacks. Flash look, warning track, then you go into the slide, and at the end it looks like a Cirque de Soleil display right there. Collision course, the three D backs. Some contortionist acts going on. And you know what? You always hold your breath because the guy will get a foot caught underneath the padding or something, or somebody will spike somebody. So Amarista, new life. One and two the count. Chop by the mound. Here we go again. This time covering is Hellickson and the 3 1 put out. And here comes Despagne. The mystery of Patrice Mers. Hitting style continues. You know, you get the feeling going back to his days in Havana that this 28 year old never cared about hitting. You know, yeah. normally pitchers are your best hitters as you grow up yeah. in the little leagues and junior leagues, sir. Oh, tough luck, tough hitting there. That ball should have gone through the right side. And it went right to the second baseman for the second out. Will Myers comes up. He's uh, stopped his uh, or rating in the dugout. He's going to come up there and try to speak with his bat. Yeah. Everyone is game. Notice how he's he's doing all the talking. But he kind of 
laughing a little bit. Hey, I think I'll go talk to Clint Barmas to see what he thinks. And you'll hear what he has to say tonight on Padres Live, uh, the post game show, and then SD Live. Squares and takes a strike. He doubled to right center, scored in the first, grounded out to third his last time up. You know, a lot of times hitters will do that, take a strike, even show Bunny, you know, to give to Bunny a little bit of a blow. He just, you know, ran down the first baseline and have him get settled a little bit. A ball and a strike at 90 on that fastball. Hey, so Marte and next. Mark Sweeney, nice job behind home plate. Uh, what a great view, and, and thank you to the Padres and also the fans down there just in, in, involving us in that. But it is, when you get that close, and you see the different arm angles, you see the speed of the pitch. It really is amazing if you haven't done it in a while. And then that last pop up to end the inning uh, off the bat of Gosowich. I thought you had that. I, one. Listen, I had my mask off. I flipped it just like Norris, and I had it. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to play. I wasn't a glove guy. You guys knew that already. Right? Yeah, you were. Don't sell yourself short. Oh yeah, sure. A tremendous slouch. Rawlings, Rawlings kept on giving me a glove. I was really proud of that. Thank you, Jim Hughes. I could see that one uh, taking a high hop off that ball paid of yours. Yeah, it does get shiny down there. I just didn't want to hurt Norris in that yeah. in that play. They had to call timeout and have someone give you a towel here, <laughs> blinding the middle infielders. <laughs> Two and two to Myers. Right at the second baseman Owings. And it's a one two three inning for Jeremy Hellickson as he has settled down onto the fifth three one San Diego. For a great moment in Padres history, brought to you by Geico last year, September, Corey Spangenberg's first career home run, a dramatic one. He takes the D backs, Brad Ziegler deep, a walk off homer for Spangenberg as the Padres win it 2 to 1. Now that was exciting. That's the way to break in your first major league home run. They ripped the uniform right off the kid. On to the fifth, Nick Ahmed, then Hellickson and Pollock scheduled for the D backs. Ahmed, a uh, hard ground ball comebacker, but Despagne able to spear it, throw him out in the second inning, and that was with the man at third. Saved a run. High fly ball, shallow and left. Upton. One pitch, one out. Alexson, the pitcher, struck out swinging the first time.
Giants losing four in a row and they're behind Colorado tonight in the four three nothing. Bruce Bochy shorthanded all those injuries. Strike hey. one. And just the addition to, of Hunter Pence back in the lineup will make a huge difference. Another strike, 0 and 2. Are leading Los Angeles four to one in the fourth inning at Dodger Stadium. Those are the other NL West scores. Here it's Padres three, Arizona one. One and two coming up. Center field. Myers comes up to collect it. Two away. Pitch perfectly. Got in on him, and when the ball was put in play, that's exactly where Will Myers was. Now that it's the top of the order for the Diamondbacks, third time around, Mark Sweeney, I ask you, the difficulty against Despiney would seem to be that he doesn't fall into a pattern. Yeah, and I think that's a great point. And when you have pitchers like that, it's a guessing game. We talked about that earlier in our broadcast about guessing as a hitter and. Those different arm angles come into play because you're not getting a typical release point. So it's a very tough night to think about developing a plan for these Diamondback hitters. Oh, look at there it is. There Dick. it is, 67, the big slow curveball. In for a strike. So Despagne now has gone four and two thirds. You combine that with a four and two thirds of perfect relief the other day. He's pitched the equivalent of a full nine inning game, allowing one run. And two hits. There's the curveball coming at you, but look at the arm speed. Mm. One and one to Pollock, who has walked and grounded to shortstop. Oh, I had a little different look that yeah. time. Sidearm two seamer brought it back on the outside corner. Yeah guys that's 90 miles an hour and it honestly to the hitters eye it looks like 95 100 miles an hour. Just the disparity of that first breaking ball put that thought in your mind. Back with a 91 mile an hour fastball but able to clip back on the screen. See what Derek Norris puts down here with the count one and two. Two seamer. Oh, that looked like, that looked like a cutter or something. Had a short break to it. And of course, every pitcher uses different signs. But majority of the time, when the catcher puts down a one, it kind of wiggles it. That would indicate a two seam sinker. And that one looked like he had a little cut fastball to it. Base is empty, two outs here in the fifth. Padres with a 3 1 lead. Slider or cutter here? Slider. Had him fooled, but he was able to get just enough bat on it to spoil. Guys, wanted to ask you too, and I think it's just a little odd that uh, Enciarte is not in the game tonight. I mean, he looked so comfortable last night, and I know Pollock is a talented player, but not having Enciarte in there, a lefty going against a righty. Kind of odd for me. I yeah. was shocked when I saw the lineup. Yeah, you know what, Mark? Uh, good question. And I was thinking the same thing, but Bob Brunley came over to our booth before the game. He said the computer got him because his numbers are not good. He's like two for 12 off the spot. But, you know, I, I like the way you think is that, you know, a guy is swinging the bat well, especially after the night he had. But maybe Chip Hale thought, you know what, with those numbers, I'm going to elect to go with A.J. Pollock. Yeah, guys, when you have confidence as a hitter, though, you, you eliminate all of those bad numbers. It doesn't matter what they throw. You're locked in because of the timing. And obviously, he's had success here at Petco Park. He has his professional opening day here. And it's just surprising to me. Yeah. Up the middle. Amarista in between hop. Good play. The one, two, three inning. 
the fifth inning for Despande with the halfway mark in this one. Four and a half in the books and coming up for the Padres after Salarde, it'll be Matt Kemp and Justin Upton. Why isn't NCRD in the starting lineup? All night, all day, I thought about it and went back and forth and just finally want to stick to the plan. You know, we we got the four guys. We're trying to get them all at bats, and uh, it was just injury day to sit. Uh, Despagne has been a tough guy for him in the past. Uh, I don't know if that would have been that way tonight. And we, we figure he'll get a key at bat in this game at some point. So beware, NCRD. And Chip Hale feels that he'll get a pinch hit opportunity and it could be a, a key opportunity later in the game. He's two for 12 against Espagne is into RD and but uh, Pollock's 0 for 5. But the manager trying to get his four outfielders. Uh, yeah. He can only put three in at a time. Solarte hits it fairly deep to center. That's a long way out there and Pollock has the catch. You know Dick thinking about that excuse me Mark but you, you think about the mentality for the younger players out there and how they're going to handle these scenarios and having a fabulous night last night coming off a big win a team win and then coming in and seeing the lineup it's a surprise it changes your mentality and I, I just wonder about a, a young player like that and how he's going to handle it obviously they have communication with him. But it, sometimes that's tough to take when, when you're trying to do and trying to put your piece in in the game. I mean, he had a brilliant night last night, a triple and two doubles. And for the last 23 games, going back to last year, hitting 381. But uh, the manager has his reasons, and uh, we'll see when Ender Enciarte does get in the game tonight what the situation will be. Kemp. One for two with an RBI on a ground out. Takes a strike one and one. And since leaving the bases loaded in the third inning. Jeremy Hellickson now has retired five in a row. Oh he's going to get in the game. If it's not for his hitting it's for defensive purposes too because he could chase it down out there. Yeah, Trumbo will come out yeah. late in the game. Inside. So two and two. If you're just joining us, the Padres got their three runs in the first inning. Leadoff man Myers doubled. Solarde with a scratch infield hit. First and third, and Kemp's ground ball got Myers home, one nothing. Then Upton walked. Deep drive to left field, but that's holding up. And Peralta makes the catch. And the third run came home on DeAndre Alonso's ground out to first. 
After Derek Norris had doubled into the left field corner. So that's where we stand 3 0 Padres, and then a double by Trumbull chased home Peralta, who had been hit by a pitch in the fourth inning for the lone score for Arizona. Yeah, it just goes to show you that Hellickson, the way he's pitching tonight, you can pitch at this level with a 90, 91 mile an hour fastball. If you can spot it, he's not afraid to bury it inside. A little bit of two seam movement down into the righties. That ball is drilled deep. It's high enough. It's long enough. Touch a ball. Number two for Justin Upton. And the Padres lead it four to one. He tried to throw the first pitch change up. It leaks middle in on contact belt buckle. That's a beautiful swing. Mark Sweeney, he got his hands in nicely. Yeah, pulled his hands in and check out the pose after this. What a great sound. Good look. And Justin Upton has been getting a heavy dose of those change ups. I think he was sitting on that in that situation. So he's hit safely in all nine games of this season and the big base hit tonight, the home run. His second of the season. So with two outs, Derek Norris. He's doubled in a run and grounded to third. Well, you close your eyes and you hear that sound, and you know that it's going to go a long way. Broken bat right back to Hellickson. Come back or out. That's it for the Padres in the fifth, but thanks to Justin Upton's power. San Diego now enjoys a four to one lead after five innings. Time now for the Harris game summary. The Padres, Odrisamar Despagne, following up on his brilliant relief appearance of three days ago, four days ago, when he retired 14 in a row. And then the Padres gave him some runs. First inning, part of that three run first, the double by Derek Norris. Mark Trumbo's double for Arizona in the fourth brought Peralta home. He had been awarded first hit by a pitch, three to one, and then. That man, Justin Upton, just made it a 4 1 game with a long home run to left field. Top of the sixth, Chris Owings starts for Arizona. Ground ball to short, charged nicely by Amarista, and one away. Another ground ball out from Despagne. So Hellickson, five innings, five hits, four runs. They struck out four. Despagne only two hits and one run. In his five innings of work, Upton one for two, a walk, a home run, scored a couple of times. Mark Trumbo with the RBI double for Arizona. Mark Sweeney, I've got an, uh, another thought about this ball club, this pottery ball club, as uh, the guy they call Goldie steps up to the plate after this pitch. 
two things that come to mind that this team is quite capable of doing after seeing after week one. Get that run back after the opposition scores a run. And also the pitching staff after scoring that run, even if they have the lead, to get a quick inning and get right back in there and get that mojo working again. Yeah, I think that signifies the type of team that you really have and picking up one another. You heard Andrew Kasher talk about it last night. He wanted to pitch better after that mistake by Salarte. That is the type of stuff that you want to hear and you want to see it. And, and it's great points too, Mark, because that is what a club does. They pick up each other, and I think early in the season we've seen parts of that. One and one to Goldschmidt. Hey. Almost clipped him. 69 pitches now for Despagne. He's not phased one bit, is he? With Rusamir. It's like pitching in the backyard. Yeah. And three and one to Goldschmidt, who is usually right up among the leaders in the National League and most walks. He has six already this year. That's in the top five National League. He's fly to right and popped the second so far. Three and one. That will be back in the crowd. Time now to check the Cholula flamethrower with Odrisa Mir Despagne on the hill. What do we got here? 93. And Mark Sweeney, what's that? That's hot sauce. Boy, that's good on a fish taco, isn't it? Oh, I love fish tacos. Do you guys know where I can find one? We'll let you know. <laughs> Full count now to Goldschmidt. Strike three called. What club I found here? A changeup on three and two. That is a big league pitch, folks. You see the grip, four seam, spin, and Goldschmidt just watches it go by right at the knees. Yeah, it's much like the strikeout pitch that Upton took from Nellickson, consistent umpiring from Bill Miller. Yeah, guys, nice job by Derek Norris sticking that at the bottom of the strike zone with the framing ability. Right on the bottom of the strike zone, Fox tracks. So two outs to Peralta. He's lined in. Oh. <laughs> Bending that Uncle Charlie in at 67. Look at Ballsley's <laughs> trying to swallow a smile. He's so proud of his pitching staff. Get up on top of it. The old Ephus curveball. And a ground ball into the shift. Solardi throws him out. And for the second straight inning, this Vanier knocks down the D-backs in order.
come in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yonder Alonso, then Will Middlebrooks and Alexia Marista against Jeremy Hillickson of the D backs. 4 1 lead for San Diego. Here's the change up. No, that's a change curve at 75. Did anyone tell Mark Sweeney it's Taco Tuesday? He can get oh, some. This is the right. time to go for it. He get, oh, what are they? Dollars? Oh, he can get yeah. a half dozen of them and he can bring some up for us. Fish Taco Tuesday? Yeah, Love it. Check it out. One and one to Alonzo. Well, Buddy Black on the phone to the bullpen for the Padres and a little bit of movement down there. Alonzo is knocked in a run with a ground out in the first, intentionally walked in the third. Fouls that off. Mark Grant, I wanted to ask you too. We're getting into the part of the game that I think is is asking you a question of how this bullpen is going to develop. We know the eighth inning, we know the ninth inning. Yeah. How the rest of it is going to shape up. I love Dale Thayer. I mean, he proved it last year. He pounds the zone. He's around 92, 93. He's not scared off by any means. I think, you know what? When you look at the lefties, I like having two lefties for situational. Alonzo on a half swing strikes out for the lefties I, and I like having two because you can use one early and not waste that bullet late as we take a look at Dale Fair. Sean Kelly you know what? still needs some time you know what he, he, he's got the ability to, to iron it out a little bit but I think when Dale Fair is going right you've got situational righties or lefties rather two of them in the bullpen and then Benoit Kimbrell I think it's lights out from the bullpen area what do you think Mark yeah, I like that I mean especially eight and nine I think Dale Fair can Handle that, but I think it's important for these guys to grab onto that role and, and be communicated where they're going to be because I think that's very important when you set up that bullpen. Yeah, knowing your role, that's absolutely right. You know, back in the day when I was in the bullpen, everybody had their, uh, you know, Mark Davis was the closer, Calvin Chiraldi, Dave Leeper, Greg Harrison, everybody knew their role. And of course, there's a couple of fellows down at El Paso, Nick Vincent, Kevin Quackenbush. Should anyone uh, falter? There's some talent there to call back to the big leagues. Two strikes now. Middlebrooks hit well to left field. He lost that one a long way. Is it far enough? Yes, off the wall. Cam's all the way back. Center fielder Pollock backs it up, and Middlebrooks a long double. He golfed that ball off the wall. Guys, let's take a look at this swing, and you see him going through the barrel of the baseball and the length he gets through the baseball. That's a low pitch. That looked like a three iron from down here. <laughs> and he rode it all the way to the wall. I'll tell you what, that was almost like an over the line swing over there on Fiesta Island. Somebody's going to want Will Middlebrooks on their team. His first hit tonight brings up Alexi Amarista. Padres a chance to pick up an insurance run here, leading four to one. Amarista struck out and grounded up. Hey, Mark Sweeney, just to elaborate on your point regarding roles, a lot of it has to do with those players accepting their roles and leaving their egos at the door. Because if you've got guys, oh, I'm the long guy, really. Or I'm the seventh. I want to be the eighth guy. No. If everybody accepts that role, that goes a long way for the success of the ball club. Ground ball right side. Goldschmidt will take it to the bag himself for the second out with Middlebrooks moving over to third. And that brings up the ever dangerous Odrisa Mer Despagne, a chance to help his own cause with a base hit. He drilled one at the second baseman Owings the last time up. Hit and tough luck. Got to find that opening. Ricky just warming up here. This might be the time for that first major league hit. Off the fist, rolled to short. Ahmed, the first for the out. And the slump continues. <laughs>
open four to one. Odrisimer Despagne filling in for Ian Kennedy and doing a fantastic job. Out of the bullpen, 14 in a row, perfect. Never been done before tonight. Using the strikeout pitch, a variety of angles and speeds that kept the D-backs off balance. He's allowed only two hits, one damaging blow, the double by Trumbo after he hit Peralta with a pitch in the fourth inning. Outstanding job by Despagne, who had a terrific spring. Cruise control, huh? He's going to go out for the seventh. Here are the totals after six innings. Four runs, six hits, an error for the Padres. They've left five. D-backs, one run, two hits. No errors. Have stranded three. The double by Trumbo and a double by Lamb. The only hits for Arizona. Darren Balsey wants to have that bullpen on the ready. In case trouble should arise here in the seventh, taking all the way, strike one is Trumbo. Grounded to first and nailed a line drive double to left center. Driving in his third run of the year. Sharply hit, backhanded by Middlebrook's long throw. Oh, a close line throw. And that's nine in a row, retired by Vespagne. Well, he can pick it down at third base, squares up. First reaction to his right. It's hits hard that he can gather himself, plant that back foot, and fire all the way across the diamond. And uh, you know what? Yonder Alonso over first base recognized where that throw was being thrown to the outfield side and adjusted accordingly. Jake Lamb, double to left, and was robbed of another hit, a diving play by Salarte behind second base to throw him out in the fourth inning. Strike one. Despagne hit a batter, but hasn't walked a man. Yes, he had. He walked the very first man he faced, Pollock, in the first inning. Off the fist, a soft roller. Salarte over to first. And there's two away. That's 10 straight retired by Despagne. As we remind you, the close cap captioning for tonight's game. Brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. A lot of ground ball outs tonight, Mark Grant. Two seam movement, not being able to square it up. Only two hits, both doubles, Trumbo and Lamb. Here's Tuffy Gosowish. Inside ball one. And he's been very economic uh, with his pitches tonight. This will be the 80th delivery coming up. <laughs> one and one. What you are seeing tonight is called pitching. It's not throwing. He's disrupting the timing of those Diamondback hitters. Sure, they've squared a few up. But in this game, that's why you've got seven fielders behind you. Just outside, 91 on the fastball. I don't think he's thrown back to back pitches the whole night. You know what I'm saying? Like, fastball down away. No, he'll mix it up. He'll throw the curve up, he'll throw the change up. He'll go inside, he'll go outside. Up high, two and two. Bullpen is busy for the Padres, a right and a left hander warming up. Dale Thayer, the right hander. And Chris Rerick is the left. 2 2. That's 3 2, and only the second walk of the night from Despagne. Nick Ahmed, a sharp comebacker, thrown out by Despagne in the second. He flied out to left his last time. And if it gets to the pitcher spot, then Bud Black will wait to see what Chip Hale does. That's why you have the righty and lefty working. In CRT, that might be his time, or yep. maybe they save him for later in the game. Depending on, we have a two men on, he would represent the tying run. Fly ball Ahmed. In comes Upton for the final out. Seven solid innings. So Grisamer Despagne, well done.
to create a culture of winning, especially when you're coming from, to an organization that hasn't had a lot of history of winning, especially recently? I, th I think it starts with confidence. I think, you know, confidence in the guy beside you. You know, the, 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 the guy that's hitting ahead of you in the lineup, the guy that's hitting behind you in the lineup. There's a little sample of tonight's SD Live. Mike Pomerantz hosting Justin Upton and this man, Will Myers. That's after Padres Live, the postgame show. Stay tuned for SD Live. It's a good one. Myers has grounded out the last two times after leading off the first inning with a double to light the fuse on a three run first against Hellickson. In between innings, as uh, Reese and Rivespagna came to the bench, but Black there to say, talk with him first. Said, I almost think you could go now eighth inning, but I'm going to use my bullpen here. Shakes his hand. Great job done. Two hits is all he allows. Two doubles. <laughs> Already working on the next time out. Yeah, buddy's so good at that. You know, it's not just a pat on the back and say, hey, nice job. I want to go over the outing, right? See how he feels. Buddy will also tell him, here, this is my thinking. This is why I want to take mm -hmm. you out. And his record at Petco Park continues to be brilliant this one year. Came into uh, the game tonight. Eight starts last year. He was three and one with a 183 ERA and a 175 batting average. And he he pitched to those kind of numbers tonight. Popped up. Might be a playoff first toward the Padre dugout and just back into the crowd. I think Will got a hanging breaking ball right there. He wants that one back. That was a hanging number two from Jeremy Hellickson. Just out in front of it a little bit. Seattle leads at Los Angeles 5-3 in the fifth. The Rockies still have a 3-0 lead at San Francisco in the fifth. Wing and a miss. Hellickson has his sixth strikeout. Yeah, speaking of the Rockies and the Dodgers and the Giants and these two teams, Padres' schedule here early is packed with NL West teams. After we go to the Cubs for three this weekend, it's the Rockies for three, then home against the Dodgers. There's a three game hiatus away from the NL West with Houston before Colorado and San Francisco and Arizona three straight series featuring the NL West 19 of 25. You talked about gaining some ground or you know what? You never know what's going to happen, but a great opportunity within the division to get ahead and stay ahead. Joaquin Benoit warming up. Salarte the hitter with Kemp on deck. Infield hit, a walk, and a fly out to center for Gunhir Bis. Playing straight away, infield and outfield. High ball to center field. Pollock out there waiting for the come out of the night for the second up. Matt Kemp safe on a fielder's choice had knocked in a run the first run of the game back in the first inning got Myers home. He had doubled. He moved to third on Solardi's infield hit. Camp drilled a single through the left side in the third and fly to left his last time. Camp is yet to hit his first Padre home run. Just a little good call, Dick, right on the outside corner. Well, it's in uh, 105 pitches. Got to work out for the right hander. Trying to finish seven.
tomorrow night. The game uh, hour earlier will be on not at 6:30 but 5:30 for Fox Sports San Diego's live pregame show. Brandon Morrow fits so well. His first start as a Padre will go against Chase Anderson. It's college night and Jackie Robinson salute tomorrow night. You can't make it to Petco Park. We hope you'll join us here at Fox Sports San Diego. Morrow going seven shutout innings against San Francisco in his debut. And a full count to Kemp with Justin Upton waiting a turn. The three four hitters have scored three runs tonight. Knocked in a couple. Spoils that. Follow the Padres all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment, at any moment, with in game highlights, live look ins, replays. They got it all radio, stat cast, much, much more. Really good. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Right field, Shamo Trumbull coming in hard. Will he get there? No, it bounces off his glove. And Kemp is on his way to second. He's going to try it for three. Here he comes. Here's the throw. He's in there. And Matt Kemp loves triples, doesn't he? <laughs> he does. He thought a moment there at second. He stretched a couple to triples last night. He failed and was thrown out at third as Trumbull misplays the ball. And Kemp has a three bagger. Yeah, Mark Trumbo played that one wrong. He should have played it on his feet on the big hop. And then Matt Kemp looks like rounding first place, plays a little game of possum, and then turns it on. See, Trumbo's got to stay on his feet and play that ball. The ball's going to check up away from him because the ball off the bat, that's thin. Nothing wrong with a little insurance kind of late in the game, right? It's a good thing that the ball didn't have a lot of spin and didn't have roll. If that goes all the way to the ball, Kemp has an inside the park home run. So Chip Hale is out. Jeremy. Hellickson has uh, survived six and two thirds, but he's going to get the hook here. We'll see a new pitcher for Arizona. Padres with a chance to build on their 4 1 lead. Our pitching change tonight brought to you by El Cajon Ford as Randall Delgado, 25 year old from Panama, his third season with Arizona, comes in to pitch with two outs, Kemp at third, and Justin Upton the batter. Upton hammered a home run his last time up, his second of the season. Big insurance run out there, four to one, Padres. Hell 
Dixon goes six and two thirds. Charged with four runs. He's responsible for Tampa third. Seven hits, three walks, six strikeouts. Thayer and Benoit staying loose. I think if the Padres score here, it'll be Thayer. One and one. Stays the same. Probably see JB. Joaquin Benoit. Side two and one. Last time up, Upton against Hellickson. He liked this one. You could tell when he made contact that ball was gone. Second deck. First pitch changeup. He was all over it. Hang your laundry. And then the ball gets away from Gosowitz. Here comes the runner tip. He scores. It's five to one. Pitch from Delgado and Kent scores for the second time tonight. Looks like a breaking ball right through the five hole, right through the wickets, and the Padres add on. Huge run. And that's the importance of Kemp hustling yep. that double into a triple. Positioning 90 feet away and able to score as that one goes right through the legs of Gosowicz. Good hustle there, Matt Camp. We've seen a lot of that. Fun to watch. On the bases and in right field. It's tough getting that batting glove off. Just outside 89 on Delgado's fastball. Delgado throws the fastball change, curveball slider, 88 to 95 on that heater. He can get it up there. He's a long reliever in the last year. Four starts, emergency starts. Swing and a miss, strike three. But the Padres on a two out triple by Kemp and a wild pitch build their lead to five to one. Sports set here, top of the eighth inning. Padres over the Diamondbacks right now, five to one. Mark Sweeney, Mike Pomeranz working on Padres Live. It'll be the post game show and brought to you by Cox Communication. We're going to talk about Odrisa or Despondia, break that down for you, show you what was working for him as well as what seemed to be working for Justin Upton, the second home run of the year. Loud noises, and if you look at Justin Upton, talking about compressing a baseball. This was a changeup that leaked over the middle of the plate. I love the pose. And you can see that's a statement. This is a right handed power from the Padres bats. Very impressive. You know, when you see him swing like that here at Peco, doesn't it remind you of what he said when he signed here at his press conference? It doesn't matter. Uh uh. I can hit here. 
and, and he can. He can clearly hit here. Coming up on the postgame show, Steve Finley's also going to join us, and he's going to tell us what he saw in Justin Swing that thought made that at bat so special. Also, we'll have a preview of tonight's SD Live. Hey, guys, we've got Will Myers and Justin Upton on the big show that'll follow the postgame show, so we'll see after the final out. A well, big night of baseball continues right after the final out, so stay with us, fans. So here's Ender NCR Day as a pinch hitter for the pitcher Delgado and Joaquin Benoit comes in to take over the eighth inning for the Padres. Relief of Despagne. He comes out swinging in Ciarte. Big night last night. Scored two, knocked in four with a double, two run double, another leg double, and a triple. The swing of MCRD. Well, Benoit could be a little sticky fast on you. He will lull you to sleep as well with that delivery, and then bang, it's up on top of you. Nice start to the season for NCRT. 393 start, and in the last 23 games going back to last year, hitting 381. This is high. And listen to this, Mark Grant. NCRD against the Padres. Has doubled in five consecutive games. Only Todd Helton, the Rockies' great oh, wow. left-handed hitter, yeah. went six straight double. A double in five straight games. You know, I could see where Mark Sweeney was going. I'm thinking right along with him when he said, kind of questioned why Inciarte did not start this game. We heard from Chip Hale and his thinking behind that, but I'm, I'm right there with uh, with Mark Sweeney. Well, you know, we'll see him tomorrow night in the starting lineup. He's worked the count level at two and two with Pollock and then Owings to follow here in the top of the eighth inning. In the dirt. Pretty basic delivery. Joaquin electing to go from the stretch. The last year went from the windup. Leg kick. Get that big body going forward. Lands flat footed. Get up on top. Good extension from the veteran right hander. He's got some giddy up now. He can get up about 95 on the fastball. Change up heavy too. That's a secondary pitch. Wants to make NCR to hit his way on. Don't want to walk that leadoff man with a four run lead. But he does after jumping in front two strikes. Four wide ones. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. So NCR Day is aboard. Leadoff man Pollock walked and grounded twice to the shortstop Amarista. Infield in a double play alignment. Outside, that's five straight out of the strike zone from Benoit. Ball to short. Amarista backhand flip. One there. Back to first. A double play. Beautifully turned. Amarista with a quick hands behind second base. A tough throw. And Solarde a good relay on the first for the 6 4 3 double play. Oh, thank goodness that ball is hit sharply because Paula can get down the line. Nice backhand flip. I mean, he couldn't have placed that any better to Solarte. But then it's Solarte's got to worry about getting to the back. Okay, the force now the runner in Ciarte. Nice easy slide. Perfectly executed, gentlemen. Nice one two tandem there yes, up the middle. Yes, sir. Still love that double play, and that may be as sweet a turning two as we've seen this year. Thanks to Amarista's quick glove and flip. Two outs to Owings. Strike one. <laughs> Safe on an air. Struck out and grounded to short, Owings. 
his season average down to 091. Two for 22. Change up. So if the Padres maintain the four run lead. Who do you use in the ninth inning? You know what this that's the luxury that I think Bud Black has. I think you go with uh, Thayer. Or Benoit ask him to pitch two innings. Depends on how quick this uh, eighth is over. He's needed 10 pitches. One and two. I don't know if we saw Benoit go multiple innings last year many times. I'm sure I mean, one plus innings. Yeah, we saw that. After uh, Houston Street was dealt. Again tomorrow night final game of the homestand final game of this three game series Brandon Morrow will seek his first Padre win after his outstanding debut seven shutout innings against San Francisco but no decision to go against Chase Anderson of the Diamondbacks. All you college fans special ticket prices for you. And of course we'll salute Jackie Robinson's first game in the major leagues back in 47. As he broke the color line on April 15th in 1947. One and two again to Owings. State in history, April 14th. Two catastrophes in history. One on 18 in 1865 on this date. The other 1912. Those are the dates, and we'll see. Give you time to think about it, Mark. Well, I know the latter. Titanic, right? Titanic in 1912. Something the Atlantic. Tough day to go on a cruise. Two and two. And another foul. How about and a bad day at the theater? 1865. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln. John, yeah, John Wilkes Booth. Both on April 14th. Wow. Pete Rose is 74 today. Really? Happy birthday to Charlie Hustle. Again, the 2 2 pitch. The Sixth, seventh delivery of this at bat, and then Rowings just fouls off another. You know, to put that in perspective, I was blessed enough to have a grandmother that lived to 102. Hmm. She passed away back in 2007. Okay, let's put it in perspective. She was nine years old when the Titanic went down. Is that incredible? Well, she could remember the yeah. horrific news. And if they would have hit that iceberg head on, it would have been better off. True story. Yeah. Instead of the side of the ship, he yeah. ripped it open. Got him finally. A changeup takes care of Owings. And that's it for the D backs in the eighth inning. And what a double play turned by Amarista, Salarte, and Alonso. Yes, sirs. Six. Four. Three.
San Diego presents Padres Baseball, brought to you by Mercury Insurance. You could get two free Padres tickets. Learn more at mercuryinsurance.com. By Petco, what we feed them matters. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Padres come up in the bottom of the eighth inning here at Petco Park. Leading the Arizona Diamondbacks 5 to 1. It'll be Derek Norris, Yonder Alonzo, Will Middlebrooks against the left hander Andrew Chafin. This is a, a novelty for Padres to see a left handed pitcher with all the right handers in the lineup. It's rare to see a southpaw. Chafin's done a very good job. This 24 year old from Ohio went to Kent State. Look at that. Good numbers. Five and a third. No hits. Pretty much a two pitch pitcher for Andrew Chapin. The fastball slider 91 to 94. And he's retired 16 consecutive batters. He's rocking the 1970s mustache as well. You don't see the straight full on mustache. No, you don't. The ones that kind of drip over yeah. that oh, upper lip. Kind of catch the macaroni in there. You know? A strike three to Derek Norris. Chapin getting a ball there. Oh, that was on the corner, all right. Corner of eighth and K. Anyway, the keys of the game. You want to revisit them? I Professor? would like that very much. Brought Don't, to you by the Honda dealers of San Diego County. Don't give away outs. One error in the first inning, and the run did not score. And keep the table setters off the bases. Pollock Owings 0 for 7. Two punchies and a double play, yo. Ground ball sharply through the left side for Alonzo. His first hit tonight. The Padres eighth in the game. That will bring up Will Middlebrooks. And there goes the consecutive outs for Chapin at 17 in a row. Well, he hit the sweet spot nicely on that one. And would you know it's a left-handed batter that gets that. Yeah. Hey, we saw that in spring training, right? Yonder Alonzo a couple of times lefty on left and put together good at bats. Will Middlebrooks doubled his last time. He golfed that double. To left center field. And for a strike at 90. Chafin came up to the big club in September for a cup of coffee, three games. And now it's made the 25 man roster this year. Hit well to right field, a long run. For Trumbo, but he's able to get there and make the catch for the second out. That'll bring up Amarista. We have the right hander Brandon Morrow. Done his pitching in the American League with the Toronto Blue Jays and now a Padre. And the big man showed some great stuff against San Francisco. Seven shutout innings in his first start as a San Diego Padre. He gets the call tomorrow against. The D backs Chase Anderson. Two outs, Amarista, 0 for 3, a strikeout, and twice he's grounded to first. <laughs> lefty against lefty. Left side, one hopper to Lamb, the third baseman. He takes care of business, and Padres gone in the eighth. To the top of the ninth, Padres five, D backs one.
the ninth inning, it will be Dale Thayer. As we take a quick look around the majors today and tonight, the Mets, Matt Harvey, eight strikeouts and a 6 5 win. Mets over the Phillies. John Carlos Stanton, three for three, leading the Marlins to an 8 to 2 win against the Braves. And Nelson Cruz is now homered in four consecutive games. The Mariners hanging on to a 5 4 lead in the seventh inning against the Dodgers in L.A. Great for baseball, all those three players. Matt Harvey bouncing back from Tommy John's 3 3. John Carlos Stanton getting hit in the face last year in the last month. And then Nelson Cruz, great acquisition in the American League West for the Seattle Mariners. And the Rockies who shut out San Francisco yesterday in their home opener 2 nothing have them blanked again tonight 3 nothing in the seventh. First pitch is outside ball one to Paul Goldschmidt with Peralta and Trumbo the big guys in the Diamondbacks lineup to face there in the ninth. Five one Padres. Ball strike 93. That's the magic number. Mm -hmm. Hits 93 usually has his best stuff. Line drive softly, but it'll fall into left field for a base hit. And Goldschmidt has just the third diamond back hit of the night. Brings up David Peralta. Fans, be sure to stay tuned after this one. After Dale Thayer wraps it up, Padres live the postgame show. Mike Pomerantz, Mark Sweeney, and an added bonus, Steve Finley, is going to join the troops out there on the set. Fox Sports Andy will talk about this one. What's going on throughout Major League Baseball? Stay tuned. Peralta lined into a double play in the first inning, hit by a pitch, and scored the only run for Arizona in the fourth. Came home on Trumbo's double. And hit the ball hard again in the seventh inning. Middlebrook's making a good play. Good. Check that he grounded the second in the sixth inning. And if the tying run comes to the on deck circle for the Diamondbacks, it would be a safe situation. Could be two. Middlebrooks flipped to Amarista. No chance for the double play. Uh, awkward at best because of the shift being on and uh, the third baseman trying to play the shortstop's role. But they do get the lead runner and safe on the fielder's choice is Peralta. 5 6 on the force play. Like you said, Dick, very difficult. You know, Will Middlebrooks was so far away from the bag to get a little extra oomph on that. And with that said, not enough time to turn it. Ground ball to short. This could end it. Amaris to the first. A double play. And the Padres take the second game of the series. Final score, San Diego 5, Arizona 1, Mike Pomerantz. Nick, thank you very much. Got a nice Padres postgame show for you coming up. We're going to talk about how they were able to crush the changeup because that was Jeremy Hellickson's weapon. We'll show you how the Padres were able to take that away. The Spagne, what worked for him. You'll hear from Buddy Black and Justin Upton, Will Myers, a preview of SD Live.